Okay, so now welcome to the third video on our clinical reasoning series. And this one is about constructing a problem representation. And you're going to see here the framework again that we're going to use for clinical reasoning. And we're going to focus really on this first part, data gathering, and this part here, interpreting and organizing data. And we're going to look at problem lists, semantic qualifiers, and problem statements, and uh, how we construct them. Okay, uh, so let's get started. So our objectives for this one is to describe the standard format in which physicians uh, will collect data and store and document the data. And so when we write it down, we also use this same kind of format. And then organizing data, uh, we're going to talk about the problem list, we're going to talk about semantic qualifiers, and we're going to talk about processing it into a problem representation. So in the last lecture, we talked about illness scripts and uh, how we use the illness script to store the knowledge that we collect from books and we put it in an illness script for a disease and we put that in our brain and those illness scripts are there but actually what uh, the more uh, expert clinician will do is have a network of illness scripts that are based off of a chief complaint or something else and so all these illness scripts are connected and the way that we can create that connection that network is by creating these illness script tables and these tables are going to help us compare and contrast different diseases what's the same about them and what's different about them and so now we're going to talk about the standard structure to uh, to data gathering. And so when a patient comes in with a complaint, uh, we know that we have to gather some data. And we gather that data in a very organized way. And so this is the organization, the standard organization that we're going to follow. And so we're going to ask the patient about each one of these things uh, or get the information from them in, from one way or the other and uh, organize it in this, in this format. And so the first thing is the initial data. And the initial data is the chief complaint, so they may tell that to the nurse and the vital signs. So that's usually written down uh, by the nurse and the uh, technician and handed to you uh, before you see the patient. So you kind of can get your mind moving about what you need to worry about. And so that's the first information that you're going to get. The next thing is the history of present illness, and that's going to be the description of the thing that is uh, bothering the patient today, the complaint that they have today. And we call that the chief complaint. And we're going to talk all about, you know, in, in, in other courses, how you gather that information properly. The review of systems is exactly what it says. We're going to go through every uh, body system, every organ system that they have and see if they have any problems with that. Because we may have missed something or the patient may have missed telling us something in the history of the present illness. And so hopefully we'll we will find that in the review of systems. The past history is all the things that they had in the past. So it could be prior surgeries that they had in the past, prior medical problems. It's the medications that they take. It also includes things like their uh, smoking history, their, uh, their occupation, their allergies, all of that information that's important to know, though may not, may not be relevant to the history of the present illness, but it's still very important to know. The physical exam is when we actually, in, when we, uh, We'll examine the patient, and we, you know, listen to their heart, look at their, look at their belly, look at their uh, face, look at their skin, look at all that stuff, and listen, palpate things, and and collect information that way. And the final thing is testing, and so that would be things such as you know blood tests that you might do, uh, other body fluids like, you know, spinal fluid or urine tests. It could be X-rays, it could be EKGs, it could be ultrasounds, it could be many many different things, and that's another source of information that we would get from patients. And so this is the usually the order we collect them in and the order that we write it down in and the order that we present it in. So this is our standard structure. And so here's an example of a case that we have. And so I'm going to go through it. Um, and so this is what our patient is saying. So this is a 42 year old woman complaining of trouble breathing. So this was our initial data and maybe that was given to us on uh, a piece of paper before we saw the patient. And then, so then we get information from her. It says, Miss Luden is having trouble breathing, and it started about two days ago. She says that she had developed a cold, and then she thought it was because she was getting stressed out at work because she had a bunch of deadlines that were coming up, and her boss was not very nice to her. And uh, since then, it's becoming increasingly more difficult to breathe, especially when climbing stairs. She says that she has chills every now and then. She's not sure if she has a fever because she didn't check because she doesn't own a thermometer. So... That's the information we have for our history of present illness. Um, I'm going to have a caveat here that this is a very shortened version because I have to fit it on one slide and we have to fit it in one short video, but you get the point, okay? Uh, so next then comes our review of systems. And so here we would say constitutionally, 
she feels a bit more fatigued. From her eye, ears, nose, and throat, uh, she has no pain there. She has no neck pain. She has no chest pain. She has no belly pain. She has no vomiting, but sometimes she has a little bit of diarrhea. She has no trouble with urination. She, her last period was two weeks ago, and it was normal. She has no skin changes, and she uh, does report that she's feeling a little bit overwhelmed uh, and is having some difficulty with sleeping. So we went through all the various systems, and we'll teach you what all of those are and the questions to ask about those. But this is the review of systems. Then we go through the past histories, and so the past medical history. She had asthma as a child. She had eczema, uh, high blood pressure, and she suffers from depression. She has a past surgical history that includes a C-section, a cesarean section birth 11 years ago. And she takes a couple of medications. She takes metoprolol uh, for blood pressure. She takes sertraline for anxiety and depression. And she is allergic to penicillin and tomatoes. And let's also say she doesn't smoke, she doesn't drink, and she doesn't do any drugs. Then we go to the physical exam, and here we see the heart rate's 110, the blood pressure's 140 over 80, the respiratory rate is 24, and the oxygen saturation of her blood is 98%. Her temperature is 98 degrees Fahrenheit. She generally looks a little bit fatigued and tired, and she's breathing a little bit fast when you, when you look at her. Her eyes, ears, nose, and throat, when you examine them, are unremarkable. Her heart, when you examine it, is normal, but it's beating quickly. There are normal heart sounds. Her lung sounds when you examine them, when you listen, you hear some wheezing on the right side, kind of at the bottom. You also hear some crackling near the bottom of the lungs there. Her abdomen is soft and her extremities are unremarkable as well. And there's no testing done uh, at this point. Uh, and so this is the information that we have. Now, as you can see, this little doctor here is saying, you know, I need to organize th this somehow. And so the way we're going to organize it is through the use of a problem list. And a problem list is all the things that are abnormal that you've collected from the data. Okay? And so I've, I've uh, notated those here by making them boldface and underline. I can see that they're perhaps a little bit difficult to read, but you can see uh, the important information that I thought. Well, it's not abnormal to be a 42-year-old woman, but it's important information to know. Because remember, that's some epidemiologic information, who she is. She's got trouble breathing. It's been going on for two days. She's stressed out at work. She developed a cold. She's been fatigued, some diarrhea, overwhelmed, eczema. So all that information I put there. And I moved it over here to the side so that we can collect it, see it easily in a problem list. So this is how you construct a problem list. It's very simple. You find the things that are abnormal and you put them in a list. Now, this list by itself, we need to process it some more, okay? So we need to process this problem list because it's, it doesn't really help us uh, connect this to anything. And so when we process the list, we do two things. We use medical terminology. We get away from the, the terms that the patient may have used. Uh, so we use medical terminology. So, and the other thing is we use semantic qualifiers. And this is just these paired opposite terms. <coughs> So you could say acute versus chronic. So starting suddenly versus been there for a long time, left versus right. Uh, so it's usually these mutually ex exclusive terms, you know, one side, you know, two-sided versus you know, uh, one-sided, mild versus severe. And so these are the semantic qualifiers. And through the course of your studies, you're going to learn all of these terms. You're going to learn the medical terms, and you're going to learn these paired opposite type terms that we use. So now let's go through and process this list here using medical terms and semantic qualifiers. Right? Oh, so before we do that, here's some examples of what a problem would look like without semantic qualifiers and what they would look like with semantic qualifiers. And so really it kind of, you know, it gives you a little bit better description of chest pain. You could say it's acute onset, severe, crushing chest pain at rest. So look at all that detail that we got into here uh, by using these semantic qualifiers. Okay, and you can read the other ones, pause the video if you want to, but let's go on. Okay, so 42-year-old woman, I think they, you know, that stays the same. Trouble breathing, the medical term for that is dyspnea, so we're going to put that in there. Two days ago, we, we would say is acute onset, uh, developed a cold, you know, and she probably says, you know, I had some, some sniffly nose and some cough, and so we would call that with viral symptoms. Stressed out at work, social stressors. And you can see that I went through here and I basically renamed these things and described them using those terms. So this heart rate being fast, I call tachycardic. Blood pressure being high, hypertensive. The respiratory rate being high, tachypneic. Wheezing on the right side, you could say unilateral bronchospasm. Crackles at the bottom, you could say unilateral basilar rails. Crackles actually works here too uh, as a medical term. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so 
If you remember from the, we talked before, there's an illness script for a disease, right? And the illness script for the disease contained all of these components here, right? But you can also have an illness script for a patient. And so what you're going to do is you're going to basically take that same data structure here, you know, epidemiology, time, core, signs, and symptoms, and diagnostics. And we added another one here, other past medical history, and we removed pathophysiology of a disease because we don't, we're not talking about a disease here. We're talking about a person who is suffering from something. And so that's our illness script for a patient. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, processed problem list that we've used semantic qualifiers and medical terms, and we're going to we're going to store it in this this format here, which is our patient illness script. So epidemiology, all the things that describe the patient and their risk factors. So who gets that disease, right? So 42 year old woman with a past history of asthma and depression. Time course, we said it was acute onset, two days. Signs and symptoms. Uh, we, we put here viral symptoms, social stress, hypertension, tachycardia, unilateral bronchospasm, and crackles. Uh, diagnostics, we have none. And other past medical things we can, we can put down in here. So now you see what we have here is an illness script for the patient. And why this is useful is later on when we talk about uh, picking which diagnosis match, you're going to match the illness script of the patient to the illness script of the disease and see how much of a match there is. Uh, but right now, we're not, we're not going to do that. So what we've done so far is created this illness script for a patient. And the last thing we want to do is create a problem representation. And a problem representation is basically a short couple of sentences that describes a patient. And you can almost take it word from word from here to here, from the patient illness script to writing it here. So a 42-year-old female with a history of asthma and depression presents with acute onset of exertional dyspnea associated with subjective fever. She has also had some social stress. She's hypertensive, tachycardic, and tachypnic with unilateral wheezing and crackles. And so... Ultimately, you're going to learn how to write up a patient and how to present a patient, and part of that is, is something called an assessment, and this is your assessment. This is your problem representation is the first part of your assessment. So we've just learned how to do that uh, using um, this patient illness script. And so what we talked about in this video really is this part. How do you form a problem list? How do you use semantic qualifiers? And how do you form a problem statement? And so your assignment for this this uh, this week is going to be to take this week's case and create a problem list. All right, that means find all the abnormal things from it, and then from that problem list, you're going to process it using the semantic qualifiers and the medical terms. And then using that processed uh, problem list, you're going to construct a patient illness script, and then using that, you're going to create a problem representation. And uh, that's it. That's for this. This is how we create a patient representation, a problem representation, and this is this is one step on the way to uh, clinical reasoning. Okay, thanks. If you have any questions, please put it uh, down below in the comments or email me. Thanks a lot. Bye.